Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make this pendant necklace with the Golden Harvest Treasure Bag. However, this is a techniques video. You can draw inspiration from it or you can find something similar in your bag and do basically the same thing. So I want to show you close up. This is what it looks like. I've made these little clusters with the cuboids that were in the bag and then just used the um, English cut or the six millimeter round pentagon beads and um, there it turned out really pretty. Now this would be nice with pearls here. Um, it's just a really nice technique. Anything cuboid shaped works really good with this particular um, tutorial. Uh, elongated rectangular type bead works really nice. So if you can find something like that in a pendant, you can do this tutorial regardless if you have the bag or not. This turned out really pretty. It looks really pretty on the neck and um, it's just adorable. So um, this video I was designing so I hope you have patience with me and enjoy the tutorial. Let's look and see what it takes to make this project. Okay, for this project today, I am going to be using things that came in the Golden Harvest Treasure Bag. However, this is a techniques video, so you can find things that are similar and make something similar. So, let's look at what we're going to be using. Now, even though I've done previous tutorials with both of these beads, I still had some left over. So, I'm going to use what's left over of the 6 millimeter English cut, pentagon, faceted, round, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to use those in the champagne color. And then I have some leftover of these cubes. I made a bracelet with them, but I still have some cubes left over. So these are the little six by three cuboid crystals, little golden color ones. I'm going to use this pendant. It has a nice big bail on it. We're going to use that. And then I'm going to add to the bag some spacer beads. These are um, four millimeter round non-magnetic hematite silver color beads. I have some in my store if you want some or just use any spacer bead that you have that you would like to use. And then I am going to use the clasp that came in the bag. I'm going to use some size 2 beetle on crimp tubes. I'm going to be using um, some fine soft flex beading wire and I've cut three pieces 22 inches long. Now, I'm going to design this as I'm doing this, so hopefully everything will come out great, but this is what we're going to be using. Okay, we're going to start this project by putting all three of our wires together. Now, you want to make sure you have a very fine diameter wire or this isn't going to work. So, I'm using Softlex Fine, and I'll show you the diameter so you can get something similar if you cannot get this. It's 0.014 inch or 0.36 millimeter. So it's a very fine beading wire. Then I'm going to, I have my three ends together. I'm going to pick up one of my spacer beads and put all three of these wires through it. If you can't do all three at the same time, then do two and then put your third one through like that. And Let's back off just a little and pull these down and pull this bead down to the center. You don't have to pull it all the way at this point because we're going to put three of them on. So let's do another one. See if I can get all three at the same time. Yeah. So I will do two at a time and then I will put the third one in and bring it down. Straighten out your wires as you pull them down so that they aren't all tangled up because that will stop the beads from traveling where you want them to. Put your ends back together and grab another one. And put it through. So I have two through, then I'll slide the third one through, 
and straighten out my wires as I pull it down. So now I have three of them on here. My big old messy mess here. I'm going to put these ends together. I'm going to slide this down to the center. I'm going to put these three ends together. Make sure you have them all cut pretty close to the same length. So cut one 22 inches long and then um, hold the other two up to the first one so that they're pretty close. And then pull these back. They're together. Pull them back away from you. Pull your beads down to the center of the wire here. And then grab your pendant and slide it through. Untangle it here. And I'm just going to put them right on top of those spacer beads. And that should be a perfect little spot for them to sit. And then I am going to add to the mix. I don't think I um I don't think I mentioned it, but I think I'm going to go grab some 11 O seed beads and I'll write it in the description box beneath video player so you'll know, but I think I need some 11 O's. I'll be right back. Okay, so I grabbed some 11 O nickel color. I may even eventually use some 8 O's. And like I said, I'll put everything in the description box beneath the video player since my introduction was not thorough. <laughs> I am designing and as I design I add and subtract things so what I'm doing here is I'm just separating my wires now so I can see where each one lies and they're not tangled, they're not weird, they're just all coming out of those beads you can see like this. And I'm going to pick up an 11-0 on this wire and then I'm going to pick up a cube and then an 11 ohm and then I am going to do the same on each wire 11 ohm cube and I haven't done this in advance so I don't know if it's even going to work we're going to find out 11 ohm cube 11 ohm And then an 11 0 cube, 11 0. And I'm just going to draw them all down towards the metal beads here. I'm trying to stay centered. Don't push it so hard that you. Um, get yourself completely off center and shorten the other side of your wires. Try to stay in center here. So I've got all three of these together like this and then I am going to go ahead and pick up another spacer bead and slide it down on all three of these wires. Let me get them together. And I'm going to grab one of my silver beads here and see if I can get it on there. Oh, I had all three of them in there, guys, and then I threw it on the ground. Arr. Okay, I actually got it. So I'm going to pull this down and tighten it up against, so I'll push on this side of the three under the pendant, and then I'll grab these together, and I'm just going to try to get this this bundle because I want these I, I want this to lay in kind of a I want them to be tight next to each other so it makes this cool little I don't know what you want to call it um little conglomeration I don't know um so I'm just trying to tighten this all together and then I'll do the other side so that I can kind of push it all together and see how it looks. So this is how I design. I just try it and see what happens. Someone asked me if I would do a designing video. So this is what I'm doing. I design many times as I'm doing my videos, but um, I'm going to let you see the entire process here. So bring this down. 
and then I'm going to find where they are again. I, I want them to make sure that they're not crossed or anything, so I'm going to lay them out nice and neat like that. And then I am going to grab a cube and put it on each wire, a cube and then another 11-0. And we're just going to see how this turns out because we just don't know. We just don't know what's going to happen here. Anything could happen. I could just decide I hate it and throw it all away. I do that a lot. Well, not throw it away, but take it apart and, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Do you see what I just did? Oh, geez, Gina. Okay, I'm not even going to say it because you guys are sitting there watching me going, Gina? the heck are you doing? All right, so put your cube on and then put your 11 O's on all three wires. Quite entertaining. <laughs> okay, so I'm squishing this all together now. There we go. And I'm going to grab another one of my spacer beads. I want to put these wires over here together. And I want to back off because I don't even know if you can see what I'm doing because I am just really not paying that much attention. And I am sorry about that, but I tend to do things like that. Okay, this side's a little uneven, so I'm going to trim it. And this is just for me working with it. It was even at one time, but I'm going to put them together. See if I can put them in this bead. No. Of course not. Oh, I did it. Oh, glory be. Okay, bring these down. And then I'm going to squish it all together. And now that it's tight on this side, because of the way that they're on the wire, they're creating their own tension. So you can work with them without the other side moving too much. So you can just kind of work with them. And this could be a little too straight. I don't know. So I'm going to take each wire and gently tug on it just to make sure that I have them all down and together nicely. So each wire, come here, come here, come here. Is that the right one? Okay. Like this. All right, so let me back off even more so you can see it. So what has happened is I've squished this all together, basically, and this is what we have. It's really kind of pretty, so that's good. And then I'm going to see if I can put some of these crystals on all three wires here see if the holes big oh yeah the holes big enough plenty big enough so I'm going to just put three or put all three wires through one of my crystals and we may end up wanting to put something at the end different we can cut um, some of these wires off crimp them we'll see what we're gonna do but at this point I can put some beads on all three so I think I'm going to so I can make one more conglomeration or maybe even a couple more it just depends on how many of these beads you have left I think I used 33 in the last tutorial if you did that tutorial um, we have to make sure we have enough to do this because you know it doesn't do any good to have a tutorial and already use the beads up so I think I'm going to then put I think I'll put three of these crystals on all three wires on both sides and um, I'm just gonna work on one side now so that we can do the other side off camera because I want to just get the design down and you can see I'm as I'm working my ends are getting all straggly that's okay because um, that's just gonna happen as you work You've cut enough to where you can trim them and make them even if you need to. Or we might not, we might even end up cutting them down anyway. So don't worry about that too much unless they're incredibly off. Then you're going to have to fix that. 
because you have to have enough length on both sides to create what you're doing. And I lied. I said I was going to do one side, but huh, I'm, I, I just instinctively went to the other side here. So let's do that. And then let's put on another spacer bead. And then I think I'll make another cluster and see what happens. Because I don't know if that's going to be too stiff if I do that. Let's try it. So I'm here. I've got all of my beads. I'm going to spread my wires out again. Make sure they're not crossed. Just find how they come out of the bead nice and neat. And then I'm going to pick up and do another cluster. So I'm going to pick up an 11 -0. And this cuboid and an 11 0. <clears throat> you could do this with bigger cuboids too. You just have to probably use two 11 0s. So this process will work. The way that the cuboids are shaped, they lay on top of each other and make this really neat um, geometrical shape as you stack them. So that's what I was trying to accomplish is get this really cool little shape next to my pendant and throughout my necklace just to add some interest to it instead of just a simply strong necklace. I like to cluster things together like this to add interest and I've done it in a few tutorials but the cube shaped, the cuboid shape, not cube, cubes don't lay together that nice, um, but the cuboids, the skinny um, cubeness of them. <laughs> oh, geez, Gina. It works pretty good. So, okay. So I think that's going to work. Now I am going to pick up another spacer. And basically, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to design one half so you can see how this is done. Um, I'm going to do one half and I may do it off camera and come back and show you. So you do know how to do the clusters now. We'll probably do one more. But this is how we're going to cluster. I want to, I have soft flex so it, it will eventually get some flexibility in there. After you do this, it's tight enough to where you can pull each wire without moving your entire piece. So just make sure you do that. So it tightens the 11 O's up next to the cubes. I'm going to get you in really, really, really close so you can see what they look like. You can see I don't really have any slack. There's, um, under my camera magnified, you may see a little, but it really, to the naked eye, it really doesn't look too slacky and weird. You can't really see the wires. It's laying there nice. So let's go ahead and we will do a couple more here and then um, I'll decide what I want to do with the back of the necklace here. So let's go ahead and pick up three of our round beads. I've lost my tension there. There we go. So I'm going to put three round beads on now and maybe make one more cluster. And then we can just maybe uh, crimp it off and cut it down and string the back or, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. So here, three more. That way when we do our, if we crimp it off and we cut down two of the wires, then we can do our crimping and our clasping with just one wire instead of trying to put three through a crimp tube, which is never a joy. And then I'm going to put on another spacer. Now you could use, instead of the nickel 11 O's, you could always use the galvanized aluminum or you could even use a color if you want in there. You could use something golden or a crystal one, whatever. Um, whatever suits your fancy. Now, I have 
all three of those on and my spacer let's make another cluster so let's separate the wires and find out how they lay so this one's in the center there we go and again we're going to pick up an 11 0 and a cube 11 0 and a cube all three of them the same way we did previously then we have to put 11 O's on the other side of each cube too so let's do that okay now I can draw them all down and put my wires together and grab a spacer Draw this all down. Now, make sure that you pull each wire individually, especially I have these. See, I got my wires crossed. So, my bead is not going to go down correctly. So, I'm going to have to lay these out nicer and put my bead on again. If they cross, they kind of braid and then they make a little like stop and the bead will not go any further. So if that happens, just pull the bead off, straighten them out and drag it back down. And I only got two in there, so let me put this one in. There. All better. Now they are going together well, and um, I really hope I've been in camera. I'm just really intent upon getting this designed, and I'm not paying attention, and um, I'm sorry. Okay, so I've done that. So I think I'm going to go ahead and put on three more of my crystals, and then I'm going to put on... A spacer and then we're going to crimp this and cut off two of the wires and then just do the back maybe in crystal so let me get this on here make sure all three of these wires are pulled tight and then I'm going to put three crystals on and I'll just do the other side exactly the same way My dryer is singing to me. You guys have dryers that sing to you when it's done? Doo -doo 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 -doo. It's kind of cute. Okay. There. And then. This one. On here. Look at that. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed you do. I think I like it. That's kind of cute. Um, so now what I have to do to end this end is, let me see if I can get this cap off of my crimp tubes because that's always <clears throat> a challenge. <clears throat> Voice is going away. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to get out two, a size two crimp tubes. And then I am going to put all three of my wires in one. I'm wondering if I should put 11 0 on there. Let's see. I don't think with all these three wires that this crimp tube is going to fall into the bead, but we're going to see. So let's put this all down here like this. All right. Now, because these are so tight. I don't really have to worry about this side too much. As we're doing this, um, 
it really tightens things up and keeps everything pretty well centered. So you just want to make sure you're centered in the very beginning so that um, you don't have to worry about that too much. Now, the thing that you do have to worry about is when you put your crimp tube on, you're going to have slack here between these 11 O's and the spacer. So you're going to have to put your crimp tube on, then pull each wire individually, tighten everything up, and continue to hold it so that it doesn't loosen. Then you're going to grab your crimping plier, and in the second divot here, closest to the handle, you're just going to grab it. Don't worry about parallel wires or anything else. There's three of them in there, so it, we're just going to crimp it. So I'm pulling on these wires. I'm pushing down on the crimp bead to keep all my tension, make sure there's no slack, and then I'm just going to squeeze. Now I have half of my crimp, so you can see I have my little fold in the middle. I'm going to go to the first divot here, closest to the tip, place this in sideways, and squeeze. Sideways by meaning that the crimp tube, after you do the first one, it has a divot in the middle and two tubes on either side. You're going to place the crimp tool on touching the tubes. So that's what I mean by sideways. Now I'm going to give myself a little flexibility here, see if I like this. Yeah, that's that's not bad. Not bad, I say. Now I want to reduce this down since I have a nice tight, tight crimp here. Uh, cramp. I can separate these wires and find the most central one and retain it. And then I'm going to grab my flush cutter and I'm going to get as close as I can to that crimp tube, pull on this wire and cut so that I don't have a bunch of wires sticking out of that crimp tube because that will kind of block my next beads. Then I'm going to, I have my center one here, I am going to cut the next one that I have chosen and pull on it and cut. Now I have reduced it down to one wire. So I can work on the back of my necklace. So what I will, I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and um, you can use some ados, you can use some more of your spacer beads, you can do whatever you'd like. I think I'm going to go ahead and put um, another spacer bead on the other side of the crimp tube just because, I don't know why, just because. You can put a crimp tube cover on it if you want, but I think that that's just fine. Just like this, you can see that I have, like, it looks like three metal beads here. I have my crimp tube in the middle, and then I'm just going to start stringing some crystals, and I'll do like six crystals and then a spacer or something like that. Just. Um, I have a lot of crystal left over because I only used like seven or eight in that last tutorial. So if you didn't make a whole bunch of those bracelets, then you can do this. If, however, you did, I do have some of these in the store so you can get some. So don't fret. I can do that. Um, I think what I'm going to do, actually, is I think I'm going to put some of these um, darker beads in. So, since I didn't put one on that side, I'm going to put them in the middle of the crystals just because the color. I'm, I think I, I want to incorporate some of the color. We could do it with an 8 -o. I think I'll do it with an 8 -o. So I'll pick up an 8 -o, and then I'll put three or more crystals and that will just incorporate the darker silver tone, the platinum tone, in with my beads since I have it around my clusters here. So um, I'm going to put an 8 and then I'm just going to put a spacer bead. And then I think I'll do three more crystal. No, it went away. Okay, one. My beads always have to argue with me, and I don't know why they do that, because I always end up winning eventually. <laughs> or so I think I do. <laughs> that is um, 
totally in the eye of beholder here. Come on, you. But even when I'm not on camera, I sit and talk to him and talk to myself and we just have a good old time, me and the beads. Okay, so that and then another silver spacer. So that's not a silver spacer. So I'm going to finish this to the end here, um, leaving myself a couple inches. So let me finish this up. Um, let's see. Let's see how long this is. I have to measure this because I may already reach the length I want. So from the very center bead to here, that's 8 inches. So that's only 16 inches. So I need at least another set. But I want to make sure I keep enough wire because the way I clustered it and stuff, it shortens it some. So I want to make sure I keep enough wire. Of course, I can put an extender and a lobster claw on it if I need to, too. I can always do that. But, um, let's see. One, one eight zero, oh. And then I'm going to put on three more crystals. And a silver spacer, and then I think I'm going to put on my clasping. So I am going to measure this again and see how many inches I have. Because if it's not at least an 18 inch necklace, eh, well, 17, 18. Yeah, so I am, I'm going to have probably about a 19 inch necklace because I'm at 18 inches here. So, this is good. Um, Mimi, I'm going to hold it up to my chest real quick. I know you can't see what I'm doing. Actually, this is going to be good. So, just measure how many beads you want on this side. Um, I have got, from my cramp tube, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six sets of my crystals. And now I'm going to find a crimp tube. Here's one. And I am going to drop it on next to that last four millimeter. And guys, I'm designing and I'm so sorry if this is confusing or terrible to you or whatever. You can tell me in the comments that don't ever do that again or whatever. And I'll listen to you. So. Okay, so I'm going to drop on my clasp. I'm going to bring this around and go back into my first two beads here. See if I can do it. Do, do, do. Come on. I'm in there. I just can't find the end there. Okay. So this is what I've got. I'm holding on to this. I'm going to find the stable end here. So the stable side, I mean that when you pull on it, the other side moves. So I've got the moving side. So I want the stable side. No, nope. this is the stable side. Okay, so in order to keep all my beads tight, I'm going to hold on to that. And I'm going to pull this down as tight as I can. I'm not going to leave any movement between here. I'm going to just pull it down tight. And then I'm going to grab my crimping plier here. And you can see the way the wires are going in here. So I'm coming out of this bead here. I've got no slack here. I pulled everything tight. Um, I am now going to cut this wire here as close as I can to the bottom of the bead. Now you can see the way that the wires are going into the crimp tube. So I know that there's one wire on this side, one wire on that side. I'm going to place my crimp tool directly between those two and I'm going to squeeze. That way that isolates the two wires separate from each other and creates little tubes around them. Now um, I have forgotten to give myself a little bit of room here. So it's not real tight yet so I can pull this up Pull that wire in before I make my second crimp. Make sure that I pull the wire up through the bead and give myself a little bit of slack here. Now I'm going to crimp the other 
side tight. Now, because I kind of goofed on that, I will do the other side on camera so you can see how to do it properly. Normally, you'll pull it up a little bit before you do that first crimp, but because I could still get some, um, I could still pull on it, I was able to save it, but that's what that looks like. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go off camera, and I'm going to finish the other side. I want you to see what it looks like so far. And because this is soft flex, I can go around and I can give myself a little bit of flexibility, kind of work that wire a little bit and get this kind of flexible because it's kind of a stiff weave. And this is what I have so far. And I think it's turning out really pretty. So what I will do is the other side exactly the same way. I'll come back and do the crimping for you again since I kind of didn't do that so gracefully. We'll do it again. All right. See you in a few. Okay, so now you can see I have finished this entire other side and I'll show you the whole necklace in a minute. But I just wanted to show you a little bit more smoothly how to do your crimping on this side. So I finished it exactly the same way I did this side and now I have dropped on my crimp tube. And then I'm going to put the wire through the loop on the clasp and then I'm going to go back through the crimp tube and I'm going to go through this four millimeter round bead and I'm going to go through one of my crystals here. And now that I'm through that, on this side we want to make sure we keep our tension nice so we find which side of the loop moves. So one side moves and one side is stable. You hold on to the stable side and that way you can keep all your beads from separating. Then once you get it to where you can't hold on to it anymore, hold on to the beads, pull this tight to where there is absolutely no slack between the clasp and the crimp tube. And then you're going to cut this wire right underneath that bead with your flesh cutters. Now you are going to push down on your crimp tube a little bit and pull that excess wire into the bead and give yourself a little bit of a loop here so that you can your clasp will move. Now that it's all positioned, find how your wires are laying in that crimp tube and then you want to place this divot, the second divot, in the middle of those two wires. So I'm going to place this here on the crimp tube and squeeze. Now, when I turn it over, you can see that I have created two little tubes on either side here. So you can get my clasp like this. Now, in the first divot on my crimp tool, I will place the crimp tube in sideways so that those two little tubes I've created are touching the tool and then I will squeeze. Now, I have a very nice crimp. My wire is inside the beads. It's not going to come out. You can't see it. And I didn't have to cut it off up here, which always kind of makes the beads lay weird and always creates a little pokey thing that drives my neck insane. So I've devised this method and I've been doing it lately on several um, of my tutorials. It works really nicely. So now I'm just going to mess with my necklace a little and kind of get some flexibility with that nice wire I used and um, show you what it looks like. I think it turned out really pretty. I need to polish up my crystal a little bit. I always have fingerprints all over, but this is what it looks like and um, I like it. I think it's really pretty. Now, you could <clears throat> always make a pair of earrings or a bracelet to go with it. You could basically do the same thing in a bracelet. <clears throat> but, um, you'd have to start at one end so you could get the tension on your crystals and then work all the way to the other. So you, you would want to start like 
here, put your clasp on, start here with a four millimeter round, do your cluster, then do your cubes, then do your cluster. You know, you could make a bracelet just like it. And that would make a really pretty bracelet. And I may do that. <clears throat> I don't want to make any promises, but I may do that because this is really, really pretty. Okay, so anyway, that's what that looks like. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, maybe you want to consider subscribing and clicking the um, notification bell and all that good stuff, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.